okay ladies and gentlemen welcome to my channel uh, today we will be discussing about a new topic called as a motors about electrical motor selections so uh, first of all thank you for my subscribing my channel and keep watching my channel uh, you will be getting updates with all the new topics so today we will be discussing about this new topic that is your uh, motor selections so what are the uh, parameters or what are the factors uh, which uh, based on which we can select a electrical motor so let's see see motor selection criteria is depending on the two types that is applications and voltage availability so what are the applications basically there are two types of motors in uh, uh, normally which we used in industrial projects that is squirrel cage induction motors and slip ring motors so maximum case we use this squirrel cage motors so application is chemical uh, industrial plants practically all fields and there is a range in this that is from 415 voltage the range uh, is uh, 0.37 kilowatt to 160 kilowatt motors can be used from 3.3 kilowatt uh, 160 to 3 megawatts you can use for 6.6 .6 kV motors uh, uh, 161 to 4 megawatts and from 11 kV onwards we can go for 4 megawatts motors so these are basically the voltage level available so depending on the voltage level available you can select your ratings Suppose you have 160 kilowatt motor. Okay, so if you want to start on voltage, on which voltage level you need to start. So you can select like 415 as a voltage. Okay, so there could be some might some minor changes in this. Uh, as of now, there is not thumb rule uh, that we have to stick to this. Even 180 kilowatt, even 300 kilowatt motor also can be started on 415 on a 415 volt motor on, on voltage. But this is just a thumb rule guidelines to select uh, the voltage levels available as per the available voltage levels you can select your motor ratings okay and uh, application wise for hoist crane pumps slip ring motor is used so in that also we have mentioned here the ranges you can just go through the range that is for 415 it is up to 160 kilowatt and above that we can go for 3.3 kV and 6.6 kV okay now talking about connections uh, in uh, for motor starting direct online starting is preferred from economic point of view because uh, the cost for direct online motors is less in case of dual starting hence motor managers have standardized on connections on uh, on motors so below table you will find the standard connections available for the standard motor manufacturing range so this is the motor manufacturing range uh, pole types how many poles so as per that what are the connections and what are the number of leads so if you see uh, up to 1.5 kilowatt very small rating motor for all type of poles star connection is available and number of leads are three similarly if you go above about 2.2 kilowatt if you see all types of poles there's a delta connections and six leads are available okay so normally our motors are all about 2.2 kilowatt okay the motor which is 0 0.37 kilowatt this will come in this category so it will have a star connection motors normally which are about 2 kilowatt 2.2 kilowatt these are all most probably are delta connections for all poles if it in lies in this category you can find from here what is the connections and how many leads are available in that motor okay so, however due to voltage drop caused in the system due to the voltage drop caused in the system by dual starting and depending on the system motors may have to be started in star delta so this is possible for motors rated 2.2 kilo and above as six terminals are available in the motor okay now see this is the insulation class in electrical motors there are three types of class of insulations for motor winding that is class b class f and class h so maximum permissible temperature limit is 130 155 and 180 according to the ambient temperature your ambient temperature is 40, 45, 50 or 55, depending on your site conditions. Okay. So what is your maximum permissible temperature rise on 40 degree ambient? It is 80. So 40 plus 80, 120. And hotspot allowance is 10. Okay. So if you have an ambient of 40 degrees, based on 40 degree ambient temperature, this is your maximum temperature rise permissible. Permissible maximum temperature rise for uh, for the motor windings okay uh, with respect to this class of insulation 
So if it is in class B, the maximum permissible temperature limit will be 130. So up to 130 degrees, the class B will have a capacity to withstand that temperature. Okay. If it is a class F, it will have a capacity to withstand temperature up to 155. If it is class H, it is having the capacity to withstand up to 180. So these are all classes. And depending on the ambient, there is a uh, available permissible rise available. Okay. And this is a hotspot allowance. Hotspot allowance means uh, up to one stage, like uh, let's say the temperature is here, it is a 40 ambient and it is rise up above 80. So total is 120 degrees going on. So from 120 to 130, 10 degree will be a hotspot allowance. Means at one point, you will find a huge temperature. Okay. So that is that allowance. They keep it as a hotspot allowance. So there's a margin like this. Now enclosures and frame sizes. So as per the, in uh, there are two types of manufacturers here we have mentioned. There is CGL, Crompton Green, Siemens. There could be a few more like ABB uh, uh, and Schneider. There could be different kind of uh, manufacturers here. But for uh, our uh, selection, these are the two types of uh, manufacturers we have taken. And this is for each enclosure. Like if, is, if the enclosure is totally uh, enclosed fan cooled, PFC motor is there. Or if it's a flame proof type D motor is there or type E motor is there or non sparking motor is there. So according to that enclosures, these are the frame sizes they have mentioned. You can just go through it. So frame size is very important from coupling point of view of driven equipment. Means when you are coupling a motor with a pump, that time the frame size uh, is becomes a very important criteria from a coupling point of view. So it has to match with each other. Now coming to the duty, see these are different different duties of motors, okay, based on the applications, okay. So let's consider understand what is this. S1 is a continuous duty. So for continuous uh, running of the motors, that the motor is called the S1 duty. For short time operations, uh, this is S2 is the duty. Uh, for intermittent or periodic operations, it is S3 duty. So depending on this duty, so based on the driven equipments, motor duties are classified. Like which kind of equipments we are going to drive it. Like if you want to drive a pump or a fan or a compressor, then we can go for this S1 duty. So what is this S1 duty? S1 duty means it's a continuous motors. Suppose if you want to uh, drive an application called sirens, sirens are, are like, like a, uh, there are sirens in uh, sirens in available in, in the plant. If there is any emergency or anything uh, uh, miss uh, in breakdown happens. The siren will keep on, uh, you know, uh, running. Uh, so that for the, for a short time. So for that the motor duty is S2, which is the short time uh, duty. So duty means it describes how your motor is going to run. Whether it is going to run continuous, short time, or in intermittent, like in periodic. Some walls, they they will start after some ten minutes. They will start for two minutes and they will get stopped. Or they may start after every half an hour. They will run just for five minutes and they will stop. So that is called as an intermittent or periodic duty. It is S3. Then this is S4. It's an intermittent periodic with starting. In case of hoist, cranes, lifts, only during starting conditions, intermittently, every time during a starting conditions, they will the, 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 the motor will start. So this is all about the applications they have mentioned here. According to the applications, there's a duty mentioned here. S8, if you see, it is for VSD application, that is variable speed, speed drives. For conveyors, you can see this is S6 duty, continuous motor duty with intermittent or periodic loading, like this. For machine tools, tools, it is S7, continuous duty starting in a break. Okay. These are the motor components. Uh, normally, enclosures. Enclosures are cast iron or cast aluminium. Core is a stator or rotor core made up of low loss, high quality magnetic steel. Earthing, uh, it is one number earthing, one number terminals on a terminal box, and two numbers are given on the uh, on a motor body. Okay. This terminal box are rotatable in steps of ninety degree. Uh, that is, aluminum cast iron material is used. 
and it is rotatable in steps of 90 degrees so as you can do the motor connections. And there is a terminal plate inside this terminal box that is Bakelite or epoxy. And thermistors and RTDs, these are basically used for your measuring the winding, motor winding temperature. Okay, so that is having some positive temperature coefficient where its resistance changes at a definite temperature. Means the temperature, when the temperature inside the motor increases, its resistance also changes, that also increases. So this is how it measures the temperature inside the motor windings. So their thermistors are used, uh, or, uh, earlier there were thermocouples they were using. Nowadays it is RTDs, resistance temperature detectors, which they use. Okay, so these kind of equipment, they are having some positive temperature coefficients, okay, where the resistance changes as per the temperature. Then there's a space heater available inside the motor for anti-condensation uh, purpose. Uh, the voltage level is 24 volts for motors rating up below 30 kilowatts and above 30 kilowatts, it is 240 volt AC. Then there is uh, bearings. Bearings are selected depending on the type of mounting, uh, depending on the type of mounting and thrust requirements. And paint, paint, we use epoxy paint and shade is 631 as per IS5. So here are a few checkpoints from electrical aspect point of view. You'll just see. So based on the characteristics of the load, like what is the characteristics of your load, like operating speed, or if it is having a dual speed, or if it's a variable speed or uh, talk speed characteristics or what is the type of your duty then uh, gd square value there is a moment of inertia value of a driven equipment what is that which is required for the determination of the acceleration time of the motor like and how what is the acceleration time of the motor uh, like in how much time the motor is going to start uh, that is required for um, matching purposes and matching the motors okay because you have to match the motor with the pump so how much time the motor will take to start to run to its nearest full load speed. So for that purpose, you require this moment of inertia value that is GD square values. So all these factors, what is the operating speed of the motors? What is the stock speed characteristic curves? So depending on the characteristics of your load, you have to select your motors. So this is also one of the important parameter. Apart from that, there is voltage frequency. What are the rated parameters and their variations? Uh, what kind of uh, starting, uh, uh, how you are going to start the motor, whether you are going to start a dual motor, direct online, start delta or auto transform starting or variable voltage frequency, voltage drive, variable voltage, variable frequency drives. So which kind of starting to be selected? I will make a separate video on this because it is too, it's very interesting. So currently these are the type of startings normally used in industries. <clears throat> Even soft starting is used. So depending on the type of starting this is also one of the checkpoints for motor selections then motor characteristics like uh, whether it requires a variable torque because it's depending on the application whether the application requires a variable torque which is using fans pumps centrifugal pumps and compressors for constant torque is used on conveyors some positive displacement pumps and compressors and constant horsepower is used in machine tools and winches so depending on the applications, what kind of torque is required. So very variable torque or constant torque or constant power it is requiring. Based on that, we can select a motor. And there are a few, some mechanical aspects like site conditions. How is your site condition? Like uh, altitude, what is the altitude? What is the humidity there? What is the ambient temperature there? Or is there in hazardous area classifications? Or the, if the environment is corrosive, so depending on these factors, from all these factors come under site conditions, which we need to consider. There is a ventilation, whether it's a fan cooled motors or air cooled, or it's a water cooled with some heat exchanges, with some exchanges they have used. Then type of mounting, like the motor is horizontal mounted or whether it's vertical mounted. So these are all parameters. Also about terminal box, whether the terminal box is phase segregated. I mean, if there is any partition or segregation between the phases or if it is a non-phase segregated, or how is the type of your termination sizes and the number of cables? What is the size of the power cables? So then how is the entry of the power cable? Like whether it is a top entry or it is a bottom entry or it is a side entry, depending on that, uh, that terminal box is designed. Also, there are auxiliary boxes like which is used for space heated terminal box. Then there's a neutral terminal box or a CT terminal box, or even for your thermistors or RTD and BTD terminal box. So 
there are different different auxiliary terminal boxes available on the motors so this is all about the factors which we have considered here okay for the motor oscillations depending based on your electrical aspects mechanical aspects uh frame sizes insulation class uh connections available applications and most importantly voltages available as per the voltage available you can select the range of the motors so i hope uh, you have got some few basic idea if you have any doubts you can put in the comment sections and if you are really interested to be to come into this uh, design course of this uh, career you can definitely call my on my number i will share my number through this thumbnail and keep watching my channels and keep subscribing so we'll meet in the next uh, video with a new topic till then thank you and bye bye